All right, guys, so you have taken a look and done your reading guide for this section, for this um, couple pages. So hopefully you've seen that we can f use the change in enthalpy of formation of chemicals um, and add up their reactions to get an overall reaction and still use Hess's law to, to find our total enthalpy of the reaction. Um, we can see this first one, they dropped the F from it and it's a positive value because we flipped the reaction. So it's actually forming CH4, but because it flipped, we dropped the F because it's no longer showing the formation of CH4. Um, it also flips the sign on our um, value there. So instead of having to do all of this, we can simplify it into an equation. Basically, the overall energy, just like this one, <coughs> is equal to the sum so that uh, the, this symbol, which is um, the Greek letter um, sigma, represents the sum of, we have our N, which is our coefficient of our chemical, times the delta H of our product, minus the sum of N times the delta H of our reactants. So products minus reactants. So um, if we take that, we can plug in so using that same chemical reaction, this one, we can plug in all the chemicals and their delta H values from the table on the next page and find the overall delta H of the reaction. So if we look, it's products minus reactants. So our first product is CO2. So they did, and it's coefficients one, so they did one mole of CO2 per mole reaction. So for every one time the reaction happens, and then this value is from the table on the right. So you find CO2 and its value is negative 394 kilojoules per mole of CO2, okay? So these are the units from that table and we're multiplying it per one CO2. So we end up with kilojoules per mole reaction. So this is how, many ener how much energy for every time the reaction occurs. Water, we've got a coefficient of two. So two moles of water times its kilojoules per mole. So that's our products, <coughs> excuse me, and then we're gonna subtract our reactant, our reactants. So we've got one mole of CH4, its value is negative 75 kilojoules per mole, and we've got two moles of oxygen. Oxygen is one of the pure elements, so um, it's in its standard state, so we can just, it's gonna be zero, that you don't find it in that table. You'll find, um, you won't find chemicals by themselves, like in their elemental form in our table. So you notice, um, something to, to notice here is we are subtracting, I know the lines are kind of off here in their editing, but we're subtracting a negative. So that's gonna flip the sign on the 75 and make it positive, which is what happened up here. The reaction had to be flipped so that CH4 was on the left side, so it flipped the sign. So our equation is gonna do that step for us, which is really nice. By doing products minus reactants, we're gonna get the proper sign there. And if you work out the math, we get the exact same value as we did before, negative 891 kilojoules per mole reaction. So this is um, another way we can use Hess's law that the sum of the enthalpies of formation um, give us the, the enthalpy of the reaction. So we're gonna do a couple of examples of this on your note sheet. You'll want that table nearby so you have it for reference. So down at the bottom, We've got these two reactions. So we're gonna start with the first one. And again, we're gonna do products minus reactants. So keep that in mind and we're gonna multiply by our coefficients. So in this one, our first product is carbon dioxide. So our delta H, we use that little knot symbol to show um, the standard enthalpy of reaction, um, is equal to, we're gonna have four moles of CO2 per mole reaction, and you can just use Rxn for reaction, times its value from the table. So CO2 has a value of negative 394 kilojoules per mole of CO2. Okay, so that's our first one, carbon dioxide. We are gonna add to that the same thing for water. So six moles of water 
per mole reaction, so for every time the reaction occurs, we have six moles of water, times its value from the table. Now we do want to be careful with our state of matter. This one is a gas, so we want to use the gas value from the table, which is negative 241.8 kilojoules per mole water. Okay, so those are both of our products. So this part is all one calculation. And then we are gonna subtract from that our reactants, okay? So we've got two moles of C2H6 per mole reaction times its value from the table, C2H6 um, there should be negative 84.7 from your table, kilojoules per mole of C2H6. And I'm actually going to stop there because my last chemical is oxygen. Oxygen has a value of zero. We don't even have to include it in our calculation here because it's going to be zero anyway. Okay. Um, so this is our reaction. we got products minus reactants. And so now we're just gonna calculate. So here's how I would put it in my calculator. <coughs> Figure that out. So I've got four times negative 394. Okay. I'm gonna add to that six times negative 241.8. I'm gonna go ahead and get my answer. And then I'm going to subtract the quantity 2 times negative 84.7. And that is our answer. So our delta H value for this reaction is um, negative 2857. Now, in terms of your sig figs, um, we don't have to worry these are exact numbers your numbers of moles so we don't have to worry about them okay we're not going to go down to one sig fig that will never happen when we deal with the coefficients um this is like doing a mole ratio we wouldn't use that so we look at all of our given values from the table and because we're adding and subtracting we're going to go with decimal places this has no decimal places and these each have one so we're going to go to the lowest number of decimal places which is having no decimal places so this is 0.4 it wouldn't bump this, so we just leave it negative 2857 kilojoules per mole reaction. If you look, your moles of CO2 cancel, moles of water cancel, moles of C2H6 cancel. We are left with kilojoules per mole reaction for each one, which is why we can add and subtract those values, because they all have the same units. To add and subtract, we need the same units on chemicals. <coughs> all right. So that's our process. The sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. So we're gonna try another one. Um, take a look at it and um, then you'll have some homework or some practice to do in class tomorrow. So here's our reaction. We've got two C2H4 gas plus chlorine gas giving us two C2H4 Cl2 gas. All right, so delta H of our reaction. If you want to maybe pause and try this one on your own, wouldn't be a bad idea, and then you could come back and check it. But. So, we're gonna start with our product. We've got two moles, C2H4, Cl2, per mole reaction, times its value from our table. So, it is negative 166.8 kilojoules per mole, C2H4, Cl2. That is our only product minus our reactants. So two moles C2H4 per mole reaction times its value is 52.5 kilojoules per mole of C2H4. And our other reactant is chlorine. This is the elemental form of chlorine, so we don't have to worry about including that in our equation because it would have a, it doesn't take any energy to form those chemicals. So that's why they're zero, just to clarify that. 
these are their naturally occurring states. It doesn't take energy to form them, so they don't have an enthalpy of formation. They're already formed. They are readily available in nature. All right. So we've got 2 times negative 166.8 minus 2 times 52.5. And I get negative 438.6. Again, we pay attention to our decimal places. We've got one on each, so we're going to keep our decimal. Negative 438.6. And then our units, moles of our chemicals cancel. We're left with kilojoules per mole reaction. All right. So we will do some practice on this in class. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks.